My approach to what's on my phone is simple. Only essentials. I'm sort of intentional about what goes on my phone because every app you bring in comes with a distraction factor you then need to deal with. You download an app, it brings its own notifications and it takes up space on your home screen. You get it. So I like to be clutter free. In this video, I'll break down what's on my iPhone 17 Pro. Enjoy the episode. Let's start with the lock screen. I always treat my lock screen as another screen that I can access to some of my most used apps and things I like to know without unlocking my phone. On top of the time, I've got the date and the weather widget. On the bottom of the time, I've got Google, Spotify, and Gmail widgets. The reasoning is simple. Google for obvious reasons, Gmail on the other end, and Spotify in the middle. I listen to music a lot. I've gone back and forth with Apple Music and Spotify. I've always found the artist discovery and interface of Spotify speak to me more. And plus, now that we have lost the sound, I'm really enjoying Spotify these days. Something cool I did the other day, I went to ChatGPT and typed in, give me the richest bass and depth sound equalizer settings for Marshall Acton 3. And I applied the settings and I really enjoyed enjoy the sound that is coming out of my speakers. So back to the lock screen. I've set it up so that I can have quick access to some of my most used apps. All right, time to unlock the 17 Pro. Let's start with the widget page. Weather widget is right up there. Let's just say Canadian weather can be unpredictable. Right below that, I've got the battery status of my Apple devices. And right underneath, I've got my fitness app to remind myself that I didn't do enough on that day. But I am back to playing soccer, so that kind of racks up the calories for the week. This portion of the video is brought to you by Soundcore. This is the world's first coin-sized AI voice recorder that somehow manages to be smarter than half of the apps I use on my phone. You just press it once and it records. Double tap in mid-conversation and it literally bookmarks that moment. Later, when you open the app, those highlights are already pulled out, transcribed with up to 97% accuracy and summarized using AI-enhanced intelligence summarization. There is over 25 different summary modules built in. It's also smaller than a coin, clips right onto your shirt, attached to a neck piece, your laptop, or magnetically sticks to your phone. You can use the sound core work for meetings, lectures, and even creatively. You can record your ideas during those moments where you get into a bit of a flow. Just hit record, talk, and you're done. All of your data is encrypted and stored securely on Amazon Web Services, so your recordings stay yours. In battery life, you are covered with the super thin charger that it comes with. Click the link in the description to enjoy 6 months of free pro membership benefits and use the code to enjoy limited time discounts. Now let's head over to the homepage. As for the theme, I'm rocking the default icons rather than the clear look because some widgets are still not optimized for the clear glass look. This seems to be an issue or an opacity bug on some of the apps. It's not iOS related. As you can see, my homepage is divided in half, with half of the page being the widgets and half of the page my most used apps. Up top, I've got the Gemini app. Since I like to do quicker interactions with my phone, I like using Gemini compared to ChatGPT. Widgets continue with the Ecovacs robot vacuum widget and a stack of widgets including Calendar, Google, and Notion to the right. In terms of idea organization, Notion is my go-to. All of my videos that you see on this channel are planned in that app. On the other half of the page, you can see my app choices. And there's a bit of a variety of my most used slash needed apps. YouTube Studio, YouTube app, IG, banking app, settings, and Gmail shows itself here again. I check my emails quite often. It doesn't mean I'll reply to them right away. I do have email sessions for that, but I like to see what is coming in and just kind of organize my thoughts before I reply. So having it appear in multiple pages gives that quick reach where I don't have to scroll to the lock screen. And lastly, I do have the Final Cut camera app here. This app gives you access to Apple Lock 2 and ProRes RAW filming. I've also kept my bottom bar very minimalist. Calls, messages, and Google Home for all my smart home controls. On to the next page. I would say this is more of a productivity slash creativity focused page. This is the page that I visit a lot during those times where I film videos. So first of all, fitness widget makes an appearance again. 
just a friendly reminder to push myself. As you can see, I'm not doing too great today. To the right, I do have some finance apps that I don't need to visit often, so they are stored here. Photos live to the right of that. I keep things pretty simple with the photo app. I've collapsed every single tab in the collections page. My landing page is usually the library tab anyways. I just get in and out. Right beside the Notion app, which I depend a lot when planning my videos, I do have the GoPro app. For times where I'm monitoring my GoPro from my phone, it's great for those like car shots. I am on that Sony universe for cameras. When I have to remote capture a photo, I'll use the creators app. And when filming my videos, if I'm alone, I highly depend on the monitor and control app. This app is just the greatest invention of all time. I can monitor myself, focus track and record all within one app. And the connection is super smooth. To the right, I have my newer studio app. I'll manage my key light from here. I do have a few different video lights. My goal is to switch to one single ecosystem for my video lights so that I can have everything under one app. And on this app, there's a bit of an AI, which I never really understood the point of but it's there now things get a bit dangerous with the amazon app i mean enough said i'll skip that on the bottom line of apps i do have the playstation app i'll keep tabs on some video games to see what's coming up and i'll follow some sales events i don't game a lot but i still want to see what is going on and more on shopping there's the best buy app favorite source to see what is new in tech retail space i'll go to see the promotions new products and compare products as well Next is the Audible app. I'll be honest, I've been slacking on reading and listening to audiobooks. I gravitate more towards podcasts these days. So there's that. And one of my favorite social media apps is Threads. For me, it beats X any day. And on the bottom of the page, I do have a Gmail widget just to show me a few of my emails. I plan my control center for perfect one-handed reach. I have the auto rotate to the bottom right corner, for example, focus modes right above that and volume and brightness slightly up top, but still towards the corner of the display. And yes, same thing applies to the connectivity bar. I just want that easy reach. And yes, my Wi-Fi is called Shoot Farm. At the end of this video, I'll show you every single app that is on my phone. I navigate through the apps by searching for the apps rather than remembering where I placed those icons. And for anything camera related, I use the camera control button rather than having an icon for the camera app. I take this approach so that my display stays clutter free and that way finding an app is not so much of a mission only essentials through the apps and widgets and search the app name during the times I need them. That's basically my setup. Here are all the apps I've got on my 17 Pro. And with that, that is it for me on this episode. Thank you so much for watching. As always, it has been a pleasure. I'll see you in the next one.